Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself, Amata, where we're going to take a look at the PS5 Remote Play feature. Of course, the next generation of consoles is finally here, and one of the surprise features that Sony had for us was of course PS5 Remote Play. This feature was stealthily added to PS4 consoles shortly before the launch of the PlayStation 5 in the United States and enables you to remotely control and use your, or your friends's, PS5. But thankfully, this feature was not made exclusive to the PlayStation platform as Sony, of course, also released a Remote Play app for the PC which supported PS5 Remote Play. While Remote Play is not one of the flagship features for the next generation of, for Sony, it's still a very nice feature in my opinion. The use cases for this are of course various, especially in households with only one television, or people wanting to show off their character in Demon Souls, or simply let a friend play the game who was not lucky enough to get a PS5 at launch or since. With availability similar to trying to find the lost city of Atlantis, Remote Play probably saw a fair amount of use around launch period and probably will for a little while yet, as retailers struggle to fulfil pre-orders and people fight against scalpers for the few units available for sale online. People have been following me on Twitter or part of our Discord, linked to both in the description by the way. You'll know that while Paul managed to get a PS5 for launch, I sadly did not. Although good news on that front, I should be getting it in the next couple of weeks. So I decided to take a look at Remote Play and give you my honest thoughts on it. Firstly, let's take a look at ease of use and setup. No matter if you're using your own PS5 remotely or a friend's, you need to be logged into the same account as the PS5's owner, but you do have the capability to use this remotely. This isn't just a case if you can only use it if you're in the same household. At the time of testing, I was over 60 miles away from Paul's location, and I will say that it worked pretty much flawlessly on my PC, with a few hiccups here and there, which we'll get into later. Setup though was fairly easy, you can simply download the Remote Play app and enter the email address and password for the account on the PS5. Once it's been done, you can connect remotely to the PS5 and also change the resolution settings. Here you can set both the resolution for the PS5 and PS4 consoles going up to 1080p on both, although you will need a PS4 Pro to have 1080p on the previous gen console for remote play. The PS5 of course also has HDR capabilities that you can use on remote play, but naturally you do need a HDR compatible monitor or TV to make this work. We opted for SDR on both our ends to ensure there's consistency between the two images because of Windows, shall we say, unique relationship with HDR. But there will be a future video where we test HDR, wired connections and more. For all of my sessions testing out remote play, I use 1080p for the resolution of the output. I'm also happy to report that setup on the PS5 was also pretty easy as well. Simply navigate to Settings, System, Remote Play. You can then see Enable Remote Play, Link Device and Connection History. Enable Remote Play and then head to Link Device and the PS5 will spit out a code that the PC user needs to put in into the Remote Play app. It may take a moment or two to connect on the Remote Play app but with the right login info and the code it should make the connection and put you straight onto the PS5 dashboard and you can jump into whatever you desire. Of course, the PS5 user on the other end does need to ensure there is a disc, the correct disc in the drive for you to play Demon's Souls or whatever. As I previously said though, setup on the PC app was flawless and it worked without a hitch. Sadly, for me at least, the PS4 was a different story. I just could not get this working either after ensuring I was the, on the correct account with the most up-to-date system drivers. The bizarre thing was though, no error message was ever presented to me, it just refused to connect without telling me the issue. I of course attempted to troubleshoot, but all of my solutions sadly did not bear fruit. So, this video is just going to focus on the PC use case scenario, but as I said earlier, there is going to be a follow up to this at some point where we will do further testing. With that out of the way, let's address probably the biggest question surrounding this, the one of latency and how it was to play. I played two games for my testing of the remote play feature, Bluepoint's Demon's Souls Remake and Insomniac's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Demon's Souls was the first game I tried out, and I'm happy to report that the latency didn't interfere with play. I felt no input delay at all between my button press and my character doing the action on screen. Latency is obviously going to kill any game if the delay is long enough, but especially in the case for Demon's Souls remaster, uh, Remake, excuse me, because From Software don't believe in the pause button. Joking aside, while of course I don't have a PS5 at my disposal to test it on as a comparison, I felt no noticeable lag while playing through the game. However, I did do some latency tests using Shadowplay, NVIDIA's capture software. I held my controller next to my mic and did, did, did various actions, attacking, parrying, switching weapons, and menu navigation. Then I timed the frames in between button press and character action using my editing software to calculate latency. 
It ranged from 66ms to 100ms at the highest with an average of 80ms latency. Considering both my PC and Paul's PS5 are connected over Wi-Fi and this isn't counting any latency added by Shadowplay itself, I was very impressed with this result. I expected it to be on the low side, as I already said, because I could not feel any input delay at all while playing. The same can thankfully be said for Miles Morales. I deliberately wanted to test this game out as a counterpoint to Demon's Souls Remake due to the fast-paced fast no nature excuse me, of the world traversal with the web slinging and of course the fluid Arkham-style combat. Thankfully though, again I felt no input delay at all between button press and character action and the game felt smooth and satisfying to play. Sadly though, that isn't to say that remote play was without issue. While 95% of the time both titles tested ran flawlessly, there was the occasional hiccup. What happened is kind of hard to describe, but it was kind of like all of a sudden I could see the game's pixels from space and I could barely see what was happening. Thankfully these blips were just that, a blips, a quick pause or cheeky press of the photo mode button in Demon's Souls Remake's case, and the issue was usually gone within a matter of seconds. But again, keep in mind one very important thing, my PC was connected to my internet via Wi-Fi rather than via Ethernet cable. It may very well be that if your setup is able to have a direct connection via Ethernet, these minor hiccups will be even less frequent or disappear completely. As with anything like this, your mileage may vary based on your internet speeds, but the results of my playtime and tests were pretty impressive. Now of course, the other big question is the difference in quality between native on the PS5 and on remote play. To truly examine the difference in quality versus native PS5 gameplay and remote play, we captured the footage simultaneously at remote play and the console itself, and examined the footage next to each other in a direct comparison. You can see the footage for yourself on the screen, as well as a few free fr freeze frames excuse me, I've taken from the footage, and you can see even more freeze frame comparisons in the article which will be up on redgamingtech.com, and the difference between the two is pretty minimal. There is definitely some loss of quality in the finer details. For example, if you take a look at this freeze frame comparison that I took in the Armour Spider boss fight. If you look at Armoured Spider's face, you can see there's definitely some blurriness on there especially, and the game definitely suffers more in darker areas, which of course the area leading up to Armoured Spider is. But if we move over to the Phalanx boss room, you can see this again here, as you can see some artifacting on the shadows, which I have highlighted here. Generally though, as you see across the footage, the main difference is in the final details. For example, if you look at the Digger King archstone, you can definitely see some of the final details of the stonework of the archstone look a little blurry on remote play compared to native PS5, but that isn't to say it looks horrible by any means. I still think it looks pretty damn good. It's just, again, some blurriness on the finer details and a little bit of artifacting in darker areas. But I will say I didn't notice this during play, it was just upon examination. Again though, do keep in mind this was all over Wi-Fi on both ends. The PS5 is doing all of this on the fly and of course there's going to be some compression. It would be kind of crazy if they if if there wasn't. But the amount of compression is pretty minimal. It's hardly a shocker that some com compression going on, but I was pretty impressed with how minimal the difference was between the two. Even on Spider-Man Miles Morales the story is the same. If you take a look at this shot here where I'm on a helipad, there is some loss of detail on the buildings and some compression artifacting on the clouds. You can also see some artifacting in a cutscene here as well, with the shadows looking a touch blocky behind Miles in this particular image. When it's in motion though, these details aren't enough to spoil the experience. Again, I'm pretty impressed overall with how remote play performed over all of our testing and my general gameplay experience. That's not to say there's that's without issues though. As mentioned before, there are definitely hiccups where the internet starts to struggle and the quality takes a huge dip into Pixel Town. But as I stated earlier, these blips are transitory and don't last more than a few seconds. The experience is not perfect, and of course nothing can replace the real thing. But overall, remote, remote play provides a low latency experience that doesn't have any impact on gameplay. And while there is naturally compression as I detailed earlier, it is minimal. It can be boiled down to some blurriness on some of the finer details and some compression artifacting that can be seen, but definitely more noticeable in the darker areas, but do appear in lighter areas as well. To be honest though, my overall thoughts on remote play are very positive. I expected the latency to be very small given I did not notice it in gameplay and also expected the difference between the two in terms of quality to be minimal as well. So to answer the question of this video, would I recommend remote play on PC if you've got a friend who didn't get a PS5 or what have you? The answer is yes. Yes I would. Again, 
Your mileage may vary based on your internet speeds, but based on my experience, I would recommend remote play. But that is me done for this video. Again, there will be an article on redgamingtech.com for this and a follow up uh, to this at some point. Not making any promises to when because we've got our hands full, tons of stuff at the moment. But thank you guys so much for watching. As always, your support means a huge deal to both myself and Paul. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.